Uh, bienvenidos a la plática Study Abroad, uh, West Virginia University, en el marco del Foro de Colaboración Académica Internacional de la Oficina de Relaciones Internacionales y Colaboración Académica de la Universidad de Guanajuato. Agradecemos a, a Henry, eh, quien, está, quien colabora en la Oficina Internacional de la Universidad de West Virginia y nos estará platicando sobre eh, esta universidad. Thank you very much and welcome, uh, Hang. And thank you very much. Welcome, Hang. Thank you, Kenya. Thank you for having us and thank you to everyone who's joined in. My name is Hank Oliver and I'm the Director for Global Advancement at West Virginia University. Oh, let me turn on my video. There we go. So um, I'm here to talk to you a little bit today about West Virginia University and some of the opportunities that are available for students from the University of Guanajuato to come to WVU for a variety of different ways. I am joined by some of my colleagues who, if you have any questions at the end, may be able to help me answer. I have Rebecca Friend from our administrative offices and uh, Dr. William Brustein, who's the special counselor to the president for international affairs. So they are both on here with us. So if you, you know, at the end, if you have any questions, Questions, please feel free to type those into the Q&A box at the bottom and we will get to those at the end. Um, I'm going to start the presentation with a little video about WVU. Um, if you're joining us via Facebook, watching with Facebook Live, we're going to put the, the YouTube link to this video in the comments. Um, it may not show directly from the Facebook Live, but you're more than welcome to click the YouTube link and it'll take you right to the same video we're going to watch. Another note, you may want to just be ready to adjust the volume. I'm not sure how loud the video will play or at what volume, but we're going to go ahead and get started with that. And then I'll fill you guys in on a lot more information about WVU. Mountaineer, wherever you may be. So I'm hoping that you all can see my PowerPoint I have up. Again, my name is Hank Oliver. I'm from West Virginia University, and I am the Director for Global Advancement. So I um, help a lot of different students from around the world learn a lot about WVU. So I'm going to go through some information with you. And again, if you have any questions throughout, please put those in the Q&A box uh, off to the side, and we will get to those at the end. So a little bit about West Virginia University. 
WVU is a large public land grant university. We have around 30,000 students that attend WVU. Um, we are located in Morgantown, West Virginia, which is in the West Virginia is the blue highlighted state on the eastern side of the United States. We are the center of the east coast of the US. So we're really easily located to a lot of different population centers. Um, as you can see, we're only about an hour and a half to an hour from Pittsburgh, three and a half to three hours from Washington, DC, close to Cleveland, a six hour drive from New York City. So we're very centrally located around a lot of major cities. However, we have the benefit of being a traditional college town. So what I mean by that is uh, Morgantown is considered to be the number one college town in the United States, which means we are a, uh, a small city with a large university. So what that means is that we have this smaller feel where you feel really comfortable and you get to know people and you see a lot of the same people every day. But at the same time, we have fantastic shopping, great restaurants, again, proximity to these major cities and international airports, um, all while being safe and settled up in the mountains. Again, like I'll take you back to this first photo. This is uh, this is where our university is located. We're nestled in the mountains of West Virginia, the Appalachian Mountains. We are surrounded by forests and outdoor activities, whitewater rafting, mining, hiking. It's truly a beautiful and remarkable place to be, and we'd be happy to welcome you to the WVU family. We are a major research university. We are a research focused university. In fact, WVU isn't what's considered in the United States to be an R1 university, which means we're the research classification highest. Of all the universities' uh, classifications for research, there's a, they're set into tiers in the United States, and WVU is in the highest tier of research. We have a lot of different areas where we focus on our research. So not only do we have the traditional areas of medicine and, and the hard sciences, chemistry, physics, engineering, but we also do really innovative and cutting edge research in the social sciences, the creative arts, um, the humanities and all of these different areas. So we're really, really proud of that research classification. It's very, very difficult to maintain. Um, so we'd be happy for you to come and join us and help us help contribute to us being able to keep that highest research status possible. So a little bit about WVU and our academics that we offer. We offer over 130 undergraduate majors. So those range from anything from chemical engineering, biomedical engineering to puppetry. All of these different programs we offer at WVU in one of our 14 colleges that make up um, the university. And those are things like arts and sciences, business. We have a college of media, which has journalism. We have physical activity and sports science. We have an athletic training program, sports management. We of course have our health sciences center, which is globally recognized as one of the top in the world, which has programs in nursing and pharmacy, medicine, uh, exercise physiology. We also have education. We have creative arts. We have all of these different programs that are available. And outside of the undergraduate programs, there's almost 400 different majors that you can do at WVU, including our master's and our doctoral programs. Um, in addition to that, if you need assistance with your English language, we have an intensive English program that is available to all students who are coming into the university. And we also recently just added a pathway program for this next coming year. So with that, you'll be able to enter and take partial courses in the intensive English program. And then part of your courses will be four credit WVU courses at the same time, which is really great for students because that means that you can finish your degree in as short of a time as possible. So we want you to find where you belong. And uh, these are just some photos that we have of our campus here in Morgantown. We are divided into three parts within the city. We have our downtown campus, which is our College of Arts and Sciences, Business and Media, which is over on the, the left side of your screen. This is the historic part of campus. This part of campus has been around since the 1800s. WV was founded in 1867, so we're over 150 years old, but we look pretty good for our age, I think. Um, we also then have our Evansdale campus. Now, Evansdale is the newest part of our campus, and it's sort of becoming the heart of the campus where it's very centrally located. And we have our College of Agriculture, Creative Arts, Education, Engineering, and Physical Activity are all located there. So on Evansdale, you're going to see a lot of very modern buildings, a lot of new construction. It has a lot of big, big lawns and sweeping green areas because there's just a lot more space than our historic downtown campus. And then we also have our Health Sciences campus. 
So our Health Sciences campus is really unique because it is affixed to Ruby Memorial Hospital, which is a level one trauma center. It's one of the top hospitals in the world. Um, so our medical students and students who are in our Health Sciences programs have this really special opportunity of being able to do a huge piece of their practical education at this leading hospital. So we're really, really fortunate to have that right in our backyard, all within the city of Morgantown. And I think these photos give you a really great impression of, of what it looks like here. It's very green, it's very mountainous. We are truly in the mountains. I have been lucky. I was fortunate enough to visit Guanajuato. And um, I think it's it reminds me a lot of Morgantown because it's very hilly. Now you guys have a very, uh, you know, a uh, much different uh, architectural style, very old school European almost with the narrow alleys and everything. But again, you'll be used to the hills and we'd be happy to have you here. So one of the big things that we emphasize on our campus is that we work smart, but we also play smart. And what we mean by that is that we feel that part of the value of higher education is what you learn outside of the classroom. So we have opportunities to volunteer. We have opportunities to provide service. We also just have a lot of outdoor recreation and a lot of student services that are available. We have a fantastic recreation center, which has 15 basketball courts and Olympic sized swimming pool. It has hot tubs. We have a rock wall inside. So we have all of those things that are available for free to students who are at WVU. But then we also believe it's really important to give back to the community. So there's a lot of community service projects. Um, we can help you find something that's related to what you're studying. For example, if you're in education, we can help get you uh, some sort of uh, uh, placement in schools to help. Or if you're in something like biology or, or the social sciences, or we can help with restoration projects, or you can do outdoor activities, or you can work in healthcare outreach. So there's a lot of different opportunities for you outside of the classroom itself. And that's one of the things we want to emphasize is that we have, we feel that the social aspect of college is almost just as important as the academic, because without one, you know, the, the other is just not quite as valuable. So the other big thing is we, we want our students to dream big and we want them to understand that anything is possible. So with that, we do host a TED program here at WVU where we highlight and focus on students who are doing exemplary things. We have a lot of different education abroad programs. The center photo is taken in Brazil. And then on the end here, we have students who are undergraduate students who are presenting their research. WVU has taken a huge initiative to push undergraduate students to have opportunities to focus on research, which is something that's traditionally left for PhD, masters and PhD students. So when we open those opportunities for undergraduate students, what happens is that they're able to be much more successful in their master's and PhD programs. They're able to get into the best schools in the world um, using that research that they completed as undergraduates. So how to come to WVU? There's four different ways that I want to really quickly discuss, and I don't want to belabor any of them. But so undergraduate, you know, a lot of students will come to WVU for a bachelor's degree, and that's fantastic. Um, we'll talk about admissions requirements at the end, but so, you know, again, we have over 130 majors that are open for uh, undergraduate students. We have our, my office, the Office of Global Affairs, does a fantastic job in helping all international students figure out and navigate the process of coming to study in the U.S. You can also do that as a transfer student. If you're taking, you know, if you're wanting to transfer your college credits from somewhere to WVU, we can help you do that. Our admissions team will help you do that. And then graduate students as well, we have all of these PhD and master's programs that are available. And after this, I'm going to go over some of the highlighted areas where we really excel. So those may be of interest to you, but I know that a lot of you are watching from the University of Guanajuato, which an interesting fact is WVU's oldest international partner. So it's really special and we're really glad to be able to participate in this and be a part of it. And so again, thank you all for joining and thank you for uh, uh, welcoming us to this. A lot of students come on exchange. We think it's so valuable to have students come on exchange because then we have the opportunity to send WVU students to uh, University of Guanajuato. So please, 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 if you're interested, talk to your international office and they can help you figure out the process of coming on an exchange program, which is where you could come from a, for a semester or a year. Um, all of those are totally viable options. So I really quickly want to go through some of what we call our mountains of excellence at WVU. And these are specialized areas where we think the university excels in terms of research. And I don't have a lot of pretty pictures for these because there's a lot of content here. Oh, I went a 
first slide. So in terms of energy, the areas where we excel are alternative and sustainable energy, carbon utilization, energy geosciences, environmental stewardship, gas utilization, regional development of energy policy, petroleum engineering, and I input clean or coal technology because ultimately there is no such thing as clean coal. But so a little bit about West Virginia. West Virginia University is lucky because we're in the heart of Appalachia, where there's a huge amount of coal. So we've been able to position ourselves as a world leader in coal and petroleum research. We have one of the top petroleum engineering programs in the world at WVU, as well as coal engineering, coal and mining engineering. And we're also very fortunate because in the small city of Morgantown, which is only 60,000 people with students here, we have a national energy technology laboratory that focuses on coal technology. Um, a lot of people, you know, it's sort of a, it's, it's not necessarily a good word, but like fracking and hydraulic fracturing and, and uh, horizontal drilling, those technologies were developed here in Morgantown. Um, and they're made safer by our research every day. So we have carbon capture and utilization. We have environmental stewardship. If you're not necessarily interested in the engineering aspects of energy sciences, you can go into land use management, which is a bachelor's program that we offer here at WVU. And we also offer up to a PhD in natural resource economics with that. Um, again, cleaner coal technology, finding ways to use coal to the best of our abilities. And then natural gas utilization is probably the biggest, most recent development that we have. WVU and uh, West Virginia sit over top of the Marcellus and the Utica shale deposits. So shale gas has become a huge industry here, and WVU is leading the way in all research and technology development around that. And we're really proud and we're really grateful to be able to help do that and to make sure that these technologies and these energy resources are developed in the most responsible environmental way possible. So our engineering, we have a lot of material sciences in engineering. We have a coding dep deposition, computing clusters, material sciences, robotics, electrochemical and corrosion testing, mechanical testing facilities, particle size and surface area characterization. I am not a strict scientist. I'm a political scientist, so I can't pretend to know what a lot of those things mean. But what I can tell you is that WVU's engineering college is one of the best in the world. A lot of people are very familiar, for example, with the Volkswagen diesel emission scandal. Well, what I can tell you is that it was WVU scientists, including groups of students, who helped make sure that that was caught. WVU scientists were the ones who uncovered that Volkswagen had been um, forging and, and falsifying their emissions tests for years. And it has come become a huge global issue. And there's podcasts about it. There's movies. There's TV shows dedicated to it. And that was science that was done right here and in California. We actually do our highway testing in California, but the scientists did the data here. They were scientists and professors at WVU who did that. The other big thing I want to discuss really quickly is healthcare. Healthcare is so, so critically important to West Virginia and to the world. And some of the areas where we excel, I've listed out here. Neuroscience is probably our largest. WVU is home to the Rockefeller Neuroscience Institute. Um, you know, the, the illustrious Rockefeller family provided a lot of support to West Virginia University to have a neuroscience institute that does cutting edge research in areas like Alzheimer's and dementia sciences and working to find a cure. So we're creating new treatments for these diseases that are being implemented right here in Morgantown across the street from me. Um, you know, it's quite incredible to think about. And that's something that you can definitely join us and be a part of. The other areas where we excel are heart and vascular. We have a heart and vascular institute that does amazing cutting edge research. We do, we do heart transplants right here in Morgantown. Trauma and critical care are big areas for us, especially because something unique about West Virginia is we're a really rural state. Over 75% of our state is covered in forest. So, for example, I mean, I grew up in West Virginia, but where I grew up, you know, you didn't see another person anywhere. So our trauma, you, and what happens is there's a lot of accidents. So we really excel in areas like trauma and critical care. Other areas, we do a lot of specialization in pharmaceutical testing. We do, um, here in Morgantown, we have uh, the Research Center for Myelin Pharmaceuticals, which is now called um, Myelin Upjohn. Uh, one of the large, it is the largest generic pharmaceutical manufacturer in the world. And they, have their research facility here and they work really closely with us on the testing of a lot of developed pharmaceutical treatments. And the other areas, of course, cancer, where we have our Cancer Research Institute that focuses on many, many different types of cancer and its treatment. 
So one of the things that people are interested in a lot of times when you're coming to the US is how to pay. So there's basically, I'm gonna cut this into three different parts. One is if you're coming as an undergraduate, you know, undergraduate students to American universities pay tuition and fees. That's domestic, international, it doesn't matter where you're coming from, but we do offer a lot of scholarships for international students in that. And even if you're transferring, that would be something that would be of interest if you're pursuing a bachelor's degree. I feel like most of you are not interested in that. So I wanna talk more about graduate education in the U.S. and a WVU, most of our graduate students are on what's called an assistantship, which means that they do work for the university, either teaching a class or contributing to research projects for 20 hours a week. And with that, they get their tuition and fees waived, and they get a stipend to help support their living expenses. So most people, when they come to graduate school, aren't paying for it. They're actually getting paid to come to graduate school. So if there's a program that you're interested in, you would work with that department to help identify possible research projects or graduate assistantships when you apply. So that's something that's really special and that's really unique. Um, and again, the other, the last one I want to talk about is if you're coming as an exchange, if you're coming as an exchange, it's based on reciprocity. So you would pay your tuition and fees to your home university. And then you would come to WVU with a uh, little additional expense. You may have to pay housing or something like that. Um, and it, again, it depends on the program, but so all of these options are incredibly affordable. Um, you know, and again, with scholarships and there's a lot of options that we can work with, um, you know, just let us know and we're, we're happy to help you there. If you're interested in coming, you know, applying is the first step. And I have a little timeline that we can go through at the end here. Um, but we will need things like your uh, an application, your transcripts from your undergraduate degree or your high school, depending on which program you're applying to, um, or just a sort of your transcripts from college if you're coming as an exchange student. Um, the other thing that we do require is an English proficiency test. And WVU does take TOEFL, IELTS, Duolingo, in the Pearson's test of English. Um, so all of those sc scores can be found on our admissions website where you can see what all those scores are. And they do vary if you're coming as an undergraduate or a graduate student, those scores will be different. So if you're interested in coming to WVU, we, uh, we want you to start thinking about it a little ways out. You know, start thinking about it, think about where you wanna live, think about how that works. Things like the FAFSA really won't apply for most international students, but you know, we do, we're already starting admission for next year. So if you're interested in coming for a graduate program, start looking now because a lot of deadlines are gonna be in December. So it's something that you sort of have to move really quickly on. Um, so please go ahead, start thinking about it. And then in early spring, we do our orientations and, and different deadlines there. And then lastly, if you have any questions, this is the email address that I monitor. Um, and we'd be happy to answer any questions you have about WBU. But also with that, we also know that if you have any questions right now, you can feel free to put them in the Q&A box or the chat and we can address them there. But I wanna thank you all for your time. This has been a privilege to be able to speak with you. Let me go to the front here something that looks a little nicer, maybe there. Oh. It doesn't, there we go. I think I may have to stop sharing it right now. So, very good. Thank you very much, Henry. Uh, I'm just going to read some of the questions that they have uh, asked. One of Perfect. them is, what, uh, what, uh, Cultural activities are available to international students. Yeah, absolutely. So I want to first preface this by saying that right now in the time of COVID, um, COVID-19, everything is very different. You know, we're not doing as many on campus activities as we normally do because um, we're trying to avoid student groups getting together. I'm sure you all are all aware of the news and how, how things are going in the United States. But in a normal year, when we return to normal, um, WVU has a lot of different cultural activities that we offer to international students specifically. One of the things we do is we often do shopping trips up to Pittsburgh or cultural activities. For example, Pittsburgh, um, you can get to downtown Pittsburgh in less than an hour and a half. So we have student groups that'll go, they'll either do shopping or they may go to a play or some sort of show. We also have a lot of cultural activities that happen here in Morgantown. We have a very large theater that hosts national shows. We also do a lot of travel throughout the state. West Virginia is known for being naturally a beautiful state. 
a lot of uh, a lot of natural activities, outdoors activities. So each year we do trips, we do ski trips, we do snow tubing, snowboarding, all of those types of things. We take groups of students whitewater rafting. We go to historic sites around the state. We also take student trips to Washington D.C. and New York. So there's a lot that we do, and what we also do is if there's something specifically that you're interested in, we just ask that you let us know, and we can help make the arrangements for it and try and put together a group to go with you. And my office helps financially support those things, so you're not necessarily paying the full expense of going to New York. We cover some of the costs. Um, we help cover some of that. So with that, we also do a lot of activities on campus. One of the big things that we want to do here at WVU is celebrate where all of our students are coming from. We have students from over 110 countries. So we always want to make sure that everyone has a platform to share their culture. So we have our International Street Festival every year where we, the entire Morgantown community comes out and we showcase all of the different cultures and diasporas that are represented here in Morgantown and throughout the university. We also do an event every spring that's more focused on elementary school children, where we have students from around the world sort of showcase their culture to, to the youngest generation, to people usually um, around five to 10 years old. And, and it's something really important because that gives those students uh, a really interesting connection to that part of the world, um, different parts of the world. So those are just some of the things, but we're constant. We have teams that are dedicated to developing activities for students to do on campus. Thank you. There's another question uh, concerning the pandemic that we are going through and mm -hmm. uh, they are asking, uh, if you're doing a uh, blended uh, mobility or something. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a really good question. So right now, um, actually, as of today, WVU is taking all of our undergraduate courses online fully for the next two weeks. So presently, or, or prior to this, we had about 90% of our classes were online. We firmly believe, though, that a lot of the education must be delivered face to face. So our goal with doing this temporary shift to online is that in that period of time, we can help control the spread to a point that we can return safely to the classroom. So again, we have intentions to return to in person instruction for for, you know, still only about 20% of our courses. Um, on September 25th, most many of our graduate courses and a lot of our health sciences courses are still continuing to be taught in person because a lot of those have a hands on component that you simply just can't do online. Um, but the but the, but the takeaway from that is, is that WVU is monitoring the situation closely. Every faculty, staff and student had to be tested before we were allowed to come back on campus. And so we're monitoring the numbers and the statistics and making our decisions based on empirical data. Every day, um, Becky and William can attest, we get an email and we have to take a survey every single day, even on weekends, about how we feel if we're exhibiting any symptoms. And we get a little email that is either green or red based on our answers. And if you get a red email, you're not allowed on campus that day because you're exhibiting something that we could consider to possibly contribute to the spread of coronavirus. Um, you know, to get into the libraries right now, you have to be able to show you have a green pass, an all clear to come into certain buildings. And so we're trying to take as many steps as we can. But to be honest, you know, there the, we can't we uh we don't control people. What you know, students are uh, 18 year olds who have been socially starved for a period of time and and sometimes people will make bad decisions. Um but what we've tried to uh, impart on our students is that when they do that, you know, the consequences will be that we'll have to adjust classes and there will have to be adjustments and no one wants that. Certainly. Well, uh, a last question because we don't want to take your time. Um, is it? Oh, yeah. What bu budget do you require or do you suggest to students for international? I mean, to students, you know, international students. Sure. So if you're coming to WVU as a degree seeking student, the federal government requires that you can show $40,000 in funds per year, just over $40,000. However, we realize, particularly with the University of Guanajuato, a lot of students are coming on an exchange program. So that number is much, much lower. So when you come to the United States, you have to go, you get your J-1 visa as an exchange student. And for that, we typically ask 
around uh, it's around six thousand dollars, I believe, and that's mostly the cost of supporting your housing and meals while you're here. Because again, we we do a reciprocity agreement where we uh, you know you don't have to pay tuition and fees, but you will be required, I believe, to to accommodate living expenses, and so that's what we typically look at. Um, I I would have to find the specific numbers, and it changes every year based on cost of living and and what the federal government requires us to change. But yeah, so I believe it's around, I want, I want to say six to 7,000 is typically a safe number. And then we also do require that students get health insurance when they're here. Um, that's the, the federal law. I'm going to say something about that concerning to our office. Yeah. Um, también pueden contactarnos a nosotros para cualquier otra información que deseen. El correo es internacional arroba ugto.mx. En el cual les podemos dar más información precisa sobre eh, la, los convenios que existen, que existen entre la Universidad de West Virginia y, nos, y nuestra universidad. Thank you very much, Hank. Before you leave, uh, uh, here's uh, Dr. Elias Ledesma, and he wants to say something. He has a message to say. Thank you, Doctor. Hello, Hank. Hi. I spent a uh, summer in uh, Morgantown some time ago. <laughs> so <laughs> I really have uh, really good memories of Morgantown and also uh, really good friends in West Virginia University. So again, I want to thank you and maybe see you soon in, yes. in, by this way or yeah. uh, hopefully in, in Guanajuato in person. Absolutely. Well, thank you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity, Dr. Elias. Kenya, I appreciate it so much. I'm glad and excited that there's someone who's been to Morgantown and to WVU here joining in. Um, it is a really special place, and I hope that as many of your students as possible can have the opportunity to experience it. Um, so you're welcome back anytime, and I also I hope to be able to see you next time in Guanajuato. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Dr. Brustein. Becky and Hank. Bye, Kenya. It's been so nice seeing you. <laughs> nice seeing you too. Uh, muchísimas gracias a todos los que nos acompañaron en esta sesión. Si tienen alguna otra pregunta, por favor, no duden en contactarnos, ya sea vía Facebook o al correo que les mencioné hace rato, que es internacional.ugto.mx. Los invitamos a seguir eh, nuestras transmisiones en vivo. A continuación está otra presentación. Muchísimas gracias. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. Bye. 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 Bye.